Welcome to episode 173 of the Quirky Monday Craftcast. My name is Kalisha and you can find me anywhere online as Nadira Tani. I'm coming to you today from my home in Central Florida and today is um, Monday, April 8th, also known as Eclipse Day. Yay! Just want y'all to know if you were in the path of totality and got to see the total eclipse, I'm jealous. But it's okay. It's all right. I saw the last eclipse, so it's okay. Um, I was able to see um, a partial eclipse here in Florida. We had in my area, I think the maximum it got was like 53% or something like that. Maybe 56. It was 50 something percent. But I was definitely outside with my little eclipse glasses looking at it, being all excited at being able to witness this natural awesomeness. So yeah, that's what today is. I have pictures, which I'll show you later. Um, yeah, so if you are new, welcome. I hope you find something here that you can connect with. And if you are a returning viewer, welcome back. Pat on my shoulder for getting in here didn't take me too too long but you know we're at it again um what else at the beginning we have bright spots and admin we'll do the bright spots first and then we'll get into the admin bits so bright spots as i always uh say is a part of the podcast where i share the good things that have been happening with you guys um, and those are things that y'all share in the comments. So if something good happened to you, something that made you smile, something that made you feel all warm and fuzzy on the inside, leave a comment down below and share with all of us what that thing was, because I am a firm believer in, um, shared joy is double joy. Also, I held my phone up like this and it just, it just reminded me the other day, uh, my friend Rena had some stickers and she goes, Oh, I'm burping. She goes, pick number one through four. I think I picked three or something, and it was this sticker. And it made me so happy because it looks like my Kiva girl, right? I just, I hope, I think I need to put like maybe some clear tape or something over it just so that it doesn't get worn down because I want it to last on my phone. But yeah, so let's get into the bright spots. And these are from last episode's comment section. The first bright spot that we have here is from Red. And it says, <laughs> every time you mention Pathfinders or Haystacks, I smile. It's definitely a bright spot for me. It brings back so many childhood memories. I will be talking about Pathfinders again today, Red. So just get ready. <laughs> Um, our next bright spot is from Granny Ariana, and it says bright spot. I went to a yarn and wine tasting in early March. It was wonderful. It was wonderful, though my anxiety almost stopped me, but I'm glad I went. Me too. I am. I'm glad that you were able to push through that anxiety and do the thing because that's where the fun is right like the times that I have been like super anxious to go somewhere or do something and actually push through it I've always been like super proud of myself after um like getting there and doing whatever the thing was and also it turns out it never turns out to be as stressful an event as I thought it was gonna be I mean yes I'll be in there a little bit ooh, but you know, that's just me in general, but I'm always glad that I went and like pushed through and did that. So congrats to you, Granny Ariana. Keep up the good work. Our next bright spot calls, comes from Rosemond and she says, um, my bright spot is that I've had a lovely creative burst 
the last couple weeks and have been knitting swatches of all kinds from some birthday yarn I was gifted as well as from Stash. I have at least four garments lined up now. I just need to choose which one to cast on first. That's a good feeling to have that burst of energy. As somebody who has like, like, I, ooh, your girl be feeling the ups and downs for real. Like when that energy is gone, is low, like I'm just at the minimum amount of energy that it takes for existing and like showing up at work and maybe doing things. If that's the limit that I'm at, um, whenever I go from there to actually feeling full of energy and feeling up and, you know, cycling back to the top, that top, that top feeling, it's so good. So Roz, I hope that um, that creative burst that you were experiencing is still going and that you are able to knit up a storm and get those garments done and feel so good in your new finished objects. Let's see. Knitting Angel said that her bright spot was um, the HBCU trip and the history um, that was learned. Um, I'm glad that that was a bright spot. If you are new, last episode I talked about a trip that um, my husband put together for his um, African American history class. We went on a HBCU tour of a ton of schools. Um, and in between going to the different um, HBCUs, which is historically black colleges and universities, um, but in between going there, we went to a lot of historical sites and museums and educational places and everything like that. So it was like, it was nine days of just black history and black excellence and I enjoyed it. And that's what uh, Knitting Angel said her bright spot was. So I'm glad that my experience on that trip was able to be a bright spot for you. Um, Mary Ann says, my bright spot is the small choir I'm learning a new song for, wait, the small choir I'm in learned a new song for Easter and I think we sing it pretty well. Good job, good job. I hope you had a good Easter and everyone else who celebrates, I hope y'all had a good Easter as well. Did I screenshot this twice? Yes. Let's see, what's this one? Um, Crazy Hawk said that the pink bunny that I showed on last episode was their bright spot. <laughs> he also has a name now. Um, there were, I think, three or four suggestions, and I've decided to mix them all together. And his name is, hold on, let me get the first part. Percival Bingley the Peg Legged. <laughs> I'm gonna have to make like a little name tag because I'm totally not gonna remember that. But his name is Percival, oops, sorry. His name is Percival Bingley the Peg Legged. And that's the little bunny, I'll put a picture here. This bunny, his name, Percival Bingley the Peg Legged. Um, that is a bright spot for me that you guys actually named my little crochet bunny. Our last bright spot is from Meg. And Meg says, my my bright spot is that my youngest kid, Sam, has gone to New Zealand for several months. I, I really wanted them to have this experience, but I definitely miss them a lot. They're due back home in a month, and I can't wait to hear of all their adventures and give them the biggest hug ever. Their name is Sam, and they're non-binary. They are also off to university in September, so I hope to enjoy the time together before they leave for uni. That is exciting. Like... That is a big trip, <laughs> going all the way to New Zealand for several months. That's really awesome. I want to I wanna go somewhere one day. Like, I have not been anywhere outside of, like, Canada. And, like, I wasn't even really in Canada in Canada. I was in, like, just, like, a little bit into Ontario and, like, Niagara Falls. So I'm, like, Canada light. <laughs> and then I went to... I went on a cruise once with my mom. But I'm like, that, does that even really count as like traveling? But yeah, so 
I'm glad that Sam was able to have that experience and to do all this traveling and much luck, much luck and many blessings to Sam as they start university. It's it's those are those are the years. The years of self discovery. Y'all, I'm I'm bouncing around like I've had coffee today. I have not. I think it's just the excitement of talking to you guys. Which is weird when you think about it because I'm not actually talking to you guys right now. I'm just talking to myself, thinking about how in the future somebody's gonna watch this video and if they're anything like me, be like talking back to the screen. Cause I talk back to the screen when I'm watching like podcasts and stuff. Like I'd be having full on conversations. If y'all ask me a question through the through the the screen, best believe I'm answering it. It's true. But yeah. So those are all of our bright spots. Um, feel free to leave a comment with something good that happened to you, something that made you feel good, feel happy. Um, because I just, I want our comment section to be a place where we can 100% know that there is something good happening in there. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So admin vets. So we do have one piece of admin and that is the <clears throat> official ending of the Pisces season make along. Um, we had six participants this year and um, I went on Instagram and screenshotted all of the um, all of the projects. What is that? Oh, it's a gray hair. Scoop me up. <laughs> I went on Instagram and I screenshotted all of the projects. Um, and then I went and I put them in order by the date submitted so that when I did the random number generator, um, it could go in chronological order or what have you. So um, we had a viewer who um, offered to send, what did she say? Two skeins of blue green yarn to a winner and I will be sending out a prize winner. So there were two prize, two prizes drawn of the six participants. So um, I wish that I could give something to everybody, but I don't have money like that. So you, you guys get my good vibes and my excitement and thank you so much for participating in this year's Pisces season make along. Um, I'm, I am hoping that the next time my make alongs come around, so at the end of this year when we do the Mr. Grinch Mal, I'm hoping that I'll be able to like big it up more. Like I was on total ghost mode throughout the Mr. Grinch Mal and basically throughout the Pisces season make along. And like I want I want it to be something that we all do again. Like when it first started, we had so many people participating. And I think the biggest difference is that when I first started these make-alongs, I was very consistent with recording and posting, and I was very active with it. And I have just fallen off of the horse with consistency. But that is something for future Kalisha to try to work on. So it, no, without further ado, our two winners are Did your girl not even actually write down the names? <laughs> Hold on, let me find them. I wrote a note of the name, but didn't write the full name um, of the winners. One moment, please. Okay, our first winner was Walsh Central. Um, username Walsh Central on Instagram. And... Um, our second winner was no Bella KB. This is I'll show you their their winning uh, prizes or their winning posts. Nazibelle, I'm probably mispronouncing the heck out of that, and I'm sorry that I keep saying it over and over again. KB. <laughs> this was the post that. Um, this was the image that they posted and then walsh central actually had multiple um posts 
she made um, a bunch of pet blankets, which is really, really cute. Um, let me see which one was their winning post. This one. <laughs> so, um, if I will be sending a message to both of you all, um, letting you know that you've won and to get your contact information. Um, one of you will get the skeins of yarn from that were donated by our viewer. And the other will get the skeins of yarn that are donated by me. I don't have a picture of the one um, from the the viewer donation, but they are there are two skeins of blue green yarn. And then this is the one from me. This is I think there's four in here. Yeah, this is four skeins of ultra out Bar mm, barocco ultra alpaca fine in this like tealy color um it's a fingering weight alpaca yarn what is in it it is 50 percent per peruvian wool 20 percent super fine alpaca and 30 percent nylon there you go um so yeah I'll be reaching out. Congratulations. Thank you guys for participating. Um, yeah. So let's get into the rest of the craftiness. <sighs> Finished objects. So how do I want to do this? So I have a basket of projects. And a lot of them are finished. I've done I've done some new crafts, not really new crafts because it's still knitting, but we're just gonna pull them out as they come. No, we're not. I'm doing them in chronological order. <laughs> so, here is my first finish of this episode. This is the um, the cardigan that I started making with the uh, Karen cakes chunky cakes that I showed in the last episode it's a short sleeve just chunky throw on cardigan um I really like making hello get my hair out the way Ooh, I didn't think about that this is gonna get all in my locks oh well so I've really been enjoying making short sleeved cardigans and sweaters and things because I can wear them here in Florida um the end so it's just a super simple construction um I did I worked flat for however long I just kept like holding it up against myself then when I got to the point for the shoulders um instead of working all the way across the piece I only worked maybe like Two thirds of the way across so that it would have the space for my neck and then i worked the same amount going down the front so i just folded that piece in half seamed it up the side did the sleeves and then seamed it straight up the back the only thing that i don't really like about the way that i seamed this together was we was um i tried to do i didn't try to do i did the mattress mattress stitch but what i didn't realize is that the way that I was doing the mattress stitch, or maybe it just has to do with it being on crochet or whatever, I don't know. Um, it created a back and a front. And basically, I mattress stitched the back together inside out. So, ouch. As you can see, there is a very clear, like, seam right here like you can see the texture um and then on the inside there is not that texture so eh, it's fine i thought about ripping it out and reseaming it but the amount of time it took me to do that mattress seam to begin with it was not happening nope so that that is a design feature i meant to do that just like badly so that is my first finished object of the episode. 
I still have a little bit of this yarn left over and no idea what to do with it. I'm probably gonna end up making like a little pillow or something or a little square of fabric and putting it in Tootie's crate because evidently that's where all of my leftover things go. Making something for Tootie. Um, so we'll put this to the side. My next finished objects are amigurumis because the Dollar Tree amigurumi thing is still going strong. So I have this one. It's a little star. My mom actually found this this one in her Dollar Tree in Delaware and sent it to me in like the box of stuff for my birthday. So I've got that little star. And I made the little dinosaur. Look at his little cell. He's adorable. I think my favorite thing about him is the little hair that I added. I don't know why I decided I wanted him to have little little hairs, but I'm so glad that I did that because he's so stinking adorable and I can't handle it. So there he is. Those little spots. He's a little crooked, but you know, aren't we all? <laughs> so I have this vision now of crocheting all of the little amigurumi Dollar Tree kits and just having them all in a line on my shelf. So I brought um, the dog that I made um, that looks like Kiva is now out on the shelf with this dinosaur and uh, Percival Bingley or Bingley Percival. What is the, what's the rabbit's name? I don't forgot already. Percival Bingley, the peg legged sits next to this dinosaur. So feel free to name the dinosaur too. <laughs> name him something simple, please. But that's them and I love them. Um, I also made one of the one of the trips where I was at the Dollar Tree looking for macrame kits for my mom's Pathfinder lock-in, um, I found this um, velvet yarn, and it was green, brown, and yellow sitting next to each other. And of course, I saw a sunflower, so I was like, I have to buy this and make a sunflower, and I did. So now I have this tiny little sunflower pillow. What am I gonna do with it? No idea. Am I happy I made it? Absolutely. It just, and it's nice and squishy and it just makes me happy. So that's why I made it because sunflowers make me happy. Um, I ended up with like a little bit of all three of the colors left um, when I finished this. So I, my initial idea was to make sunflower granny squares and like put them on the front of a tote bag or something like that but um after i made them i ran into a couple issues okay number one i i was making this up as i went along and i decided to do 10 double crochets in the first row and when you're working a flat round shape in crochet whatever number you start with in the middle is going to be that multiple going out so we've got 10 20 30 etc um i didn't think about that when i went to make my granny squares uh because i did i increased out to 30 stitches and a square has four corners and 30 does not divide evenly into four so I was, you know, kind of stuck trying to figure out what I wanted to do because um, I didn't want to frog the the centers that I made. So um, I just kind of like made up something. But after I did all of my rounds and then I put like one round of um, the yellow <laughs> around the center brown parts, I looked at it and I could only see like a cheeseburger <laughs> and then I could I couldn't unsee it and so I was like I don't want to have cheeseburger slices on my bag 
and then I tried to you know connect them with like the green I was I was really trying very hard to make this thing work and then like the little piece of green just reminded me of lettuce and it, it was a cheeseburger that's that that was all she wrote so I was talking to my mom and she was laughing at me and so then I ended up just being like you know what screw it we're just gonna figure out an even way to connect these all together and I made this thing and it's currently in Tootie's crate because she may or may not play with it as a toy I don't know but I use up all the yarn and that's what really matters right so I have some resin crafts that I made and some quilling crafts so we're gonna do resin quilling and then machine knitting yeah so one of the things that really like sparked me into um resin and like the world of resin were these little toy kits that um i came across on the internet um did i show you guys any of these i might have anyway um they're these little uh what are they called you universe to whatever they're those little like they're oh my gosh words Blech. it's one of those toys that you put together and then um like the whole activity is just putting all these little pieces together to get a tiny version of a thing and um my friend tiffany and i had a craft night where all we like we put together these little things it was delightful had so much fun yay so this was the set that i bought for lamar because he really likes ice cream and like ice cream and donuts and all that all that stuff so um i got him this ice cream set and he made them and then he was like okay that was nice and that was all she wrote so um they just sat on the table for like ever so instead of just letting them rot i decided to put little uh earring hoops on them and make them into earrings slash uh progress keepers and they're lightweight so i don't have to worry about them like dragging my knitting or crochet down um and i really like them they're super cute it's a little fish is that upside down no look it's a little fish so I have these and then I also um, after I took the resin class at the library I had absolutely had to buy supplies myself and and make resin things myself I mean I already had the the UV lamp from when we made those so only made sense so I got these little um, like little silicone little silicone molds and I was looking at them and I was like oh I can make like progress keepers and stuff like to me anything small it's a progress keeper I have so many progress keepers it's actually ridiculous but I made these oh turn it around I made these little monstera I made these little monstera leaves and then I made this little gem that has a star inside and I was playing with um, you know trying to figure out like what it would look like to do basically a layer of clear then the star and then like the blue sparkly back like a watery kind of thing and I think it came out kind of cute um, the only thing that I don't like about this is that because I use like the gem shaped um, uh, mold, it really distorts the shape of the star. So if I were to do it again, I would do one that has like a flat space where I can put the star so you can see it clearly. But yes, I will be playing more with resin. Um, it was a lot of fun. I'm so glad that I followed the happiness and and bought the supplies um so quilling 
um i don't know if i met if i mentioned it in the last episode i probably did since i mentioned pathfinders but my mom is a pathfinder leader at her church pathfinders for those of you who don't know it's like girl scouts and boy scouts but for um kids in the adventist church same thing you have like honors that you get or like patches for different skills and skills <laughs> um you learn marching and drilling and all that good stuff so my mom is a pathfinder leader and this past weekend she had a lock-in which is like a sleepover for um a bunch of the pathfinder clubs in her area and she had me come on and teach the kids how to do paper quilling um which was pretty cool it was pretty easy um i went through the um, requirements of the honor and it was like you know you had to do like all these different um shapes so i went ahead and i made all of the shapes um that were required to do the honor and i think a couple days before the lock-in i did like a facetime call with my mom so that i could show her how to do all the different shapes and she was like nah we can't do all this this is gonna take too long you got you gotta cut it down you gotta cut it down so I cut it down from like 15 shapes that were asked for, to do down to like four, I think. So I taught them how to do a tight circle, a loose circle, a marquee, and a teardrop. And then they used those shapes to create a flower pattern. Um, Cause that was like the last thing that you had to do to be like, I can do this, um, is to create that flower pattern. So this is what i did i was also going to teach them how to do scrolls but we had to cut that for for time but these are the shapes that i taught them how to do this one looks this one looks a little janky because um i accidentally squished it i dropped it and squished it but you get the you get the gist so we had them do these four shapes and then um had them put together a little picture so this is my my uh little flower and i did a sun i was most of this stuff like the sun and the clouds and the tulip actually all of these things i put together while i was waiting for them to like catch up with me <laughs> so i would show them how to make a shape and then i would just kind of sit there and wait for them to to do it and then we would move on to the next one and i would wait so i created this um the clouds i had a lot of fun with because um last podcast i mentioned that one of our viewers sent me some um, quilling supplies. One of the supplies that was in that box was like a crimper. So like it makes it like look like corrugated cardboard. Can you see that? Yeah, it makes it kind of look like the inside of cardboard. So um, I ran the paper through the crimper and then, you know, coiled it up and then kind of like squished it into like a gen general cloud like shape. And then for this sun, I did a yellow sheet and an, an bleh, a yellow strip and an orange strip together so that you get kind of like that, not kind of, you definitely do get a two color um, situation there for the little sun. And I thought that was cute. So that was my um, quilling finished object. Um, but since we didn't go through making all the different shapes, I showed um, the students, the students, I showed the Pathfinders the different shapes um, like this. Um, I had made a, a grid, I had a nice little lesson set out, have a little grid with what the item was, what the shape was. We were gonna make the shape and glue it in the grid. <laughs> Teacher Kalisha was present, but anyway, didn't get to use them. So this is the square. That is a really nice square. I did a good job on that square. Good job, girly. There's the marquee, which you guys saw already. A teardrop. A shaped teardrop. Um, these are scrolls. There's a shaped marquee. Tight circle, loose circle, half circle. <laughs> Tight circle, loose circle, half circle. Crescent. 
and rectangle. Those are the shapes that I had to show them. And then we had scrolls. So you have a loose scroll, a loose scroll, an S scroll, and a C scroll. And those are those are all of the little quilling shapes that I made. Um, I'm definitely gonna keep these as a reference for myself um, as I go forth in my quilling adventures. But it was fun to do that. The last two finished objects that I have are machine knitting. So I don't know if I mentioned, but one of my church members um, gave me her knitting machine, which is an incredible sweater, incre Bond Incredible Sweater Machine. I think that's what it's called. But um, I already had one of the same sh machine at home. So um, I decided to take the second machine to my school so that we can use it in the knit and crochet group. Um, since it's the end of the trimester, we haven't had any students show up to the knitting and crochet group for like the last month. And um, that basically led to me and Sarah just learning how to use this machine and being all excited by ourselves, which is totally fine. But because I relearned how to use the knitting machine, I have been more inspired to actually pull mine out and use it here. And so this is what I did with it. So this was the first project that I made. I know, like start big girly, huh? So last episode, I was talking about how I wanted to make more summer tops. So I took that and ran with it. So this top, it goes around the neck, the neckline goes like this. And then I took inspiration from the um, Summer Secret Crop uh, by Jessie Mae because with these uh, decreases that go this way. And the back is exactly like the front. And then it just goes straight down. So I machine knit, how am I gonna show you this? Yeah, I machine knit from here to the ribbing. So this was all one continuous piece. Um, I used all of the pins on the whole machine. This machine has a bed of 100 pins. I ended up, how did I do this? I knit it on the machine, the body flat. Then I put the back stitches on hold, knit the front decreases, put those on hold, knit the back decreases, um, then did the whole neck business. And then I came up the side and did, is it this side? Yeah. I did another um, mattress stitch up the side. And then I did the ribbing on the bottom. All of my ends are woven in. I just need to trim them and um, block this. This yarn is loops and threads, ombre something from Michaels. And I used, I didn't use even a whole um, skein of this. I really like the, like the gauge that I got on the machine. This yarn is a, it's like a DK weight, heavy DK. Um, and it works up to be similar to like, if you were to knit that on like a four and a half, five millimeter needle. So you can see through it. Like you can see through it. It's very light. Um, and I think after I steam it, it's gonna be even lighter because this is an acrylic yarn, but very happy with this. I'm excited to wear it. And also excited to make more tops on my knitting machine. Now, the next top is really going to show you like why Kalisha needs to just put her headphones on and knitting machine up this world because I have this. <laughs> no ends are woven in on this guy, but this took me 
less than a day to make. Excuse me? So I knit the front panel and the back panel are exactly the same. Um, and then I just kind of like put it over me to see like how far in I wanted the shoulders to go and then measured up 14 inches from the bottom and that's where my arm went. I did a couple inches of one by one rib around the neck and then a, uh, was it Judy surprisingly stretchy bind off or Jenny? Whoever's surprisingly stretchy bind off, I did that. And then I did the same thing around the arms, a couple, a couple rows of one by one rib and then the bind off. The bottom is, um, I think maybe 10 rows of ribbing or so. Nah, it's like six. Like six rows of ribbing, stretchy bind off. The biggest difference that I did with this, which I will carry on to any of my future projects, is I did not do the mattress stitch. Instead, I joined them with a crochet slip stitch. Let me see if I can find a spot where you can see it. Yeah, just a crochet slip stitch. Um, I made sure to stay straight <laughs> down the way. And I, I love how it came out. Um, this yarn is Big Twist. I think it's Big Twist Living. Um, I, don't, I don't remember the colorway, but Lamar bought me this yarn um, maybe like a month and a half ago. I was having a particularly bad day. I was in like a downswing and he brought me yarn to make me feel better. Uh, that was the sweetest thing ever. So I was really excited to go ahead and make something using this yarn. Um, I really like the way that it fits. I, if, if editing Kalisha will oblige me, there might be a photo or video of me wearing this. If not, I like the way it fits and trust me. <laughs> So the fact that this was just so easy and so quick is just, wait a minute, am I about to burn through like so much yarn? Yes. And because this is new and novel, my brain is like, let's do it all the time. So I need to capitalize on that energy so that I actually, you know, do it. Um, but that is it for my finished objects let's see um the next thing is works in progress is it yeah the next thing is works in progress and the i only have two to talk about one that has seen action and the other one has seen nothing so the one that has no action is the the rabbit from the red heart amigurumi kit i'm not enjoying that at all that yarn it untwists it's splitty very much don't like but because i paid for it i'm going to make it just not right now like every time i look at it i'm just like so hopefully it gets it gets done soon but my other work in progress that actually has been seeing work is this sock we're working on it. Um, I'll show you this side because it has less ends, like changes. But this um, is like my office sock, my not doing anything, so I'm knitting sock. And I have this much left. Um, the plan for this is to knit all of this yarn for the body, and then I'm going to knit a cuff. Yeah, is that what I'm gonna do? Yeah, because either way, the other cuff is gonna be bottom up. So um, I'm gonna knit a cuff and then we're gonna cut it in half and I'm gonna knit toes and then we're gonna cut in um, afterthought heels and I'll knit those. And that's, that's it. Um, I mentioned last time that I like to do um, two at a time socks like this um, if I only have one skein or like one 50 gram ball of a yarn i'll do it like this but typically i'll start with a toe and then knit all of the yarn and then do another toe so that both of my cuffs are going the same direction just because 
I don't like when they look different, but here we are. Um, yeah, this is Patton's Croy Northern Light Stripes, something like that. But this will be done soon, soon, soon. So my, that's my, those are my only two works in progress. I only have one maker plan, right? Yes, I only have one maker plan slash stash acquisition, and that is using this yarn. So this yarn is from the Crochet Cove, and it's called Middle School Blues. It is her comfy DK base, which is 75% superwash merino. That was a huge lizard, bro. Anyway, 75% 75, 75 superwash merino, 25% nylon. It's 100 grams for 246 yards. I am using this to make a pair of socks for my aunt. Cheese and rice. I'm using this to make a pair of socks for my aunt, and I'm going to be using the laid edges pattern. I've done laid edges one time, and as I remember, it flew off the needles. Also, I don't know where my laid edges socks are. This lizard is just loud. Shh. Anyway, um, I don't know where my, my uh, socks are, but my aunt will get these. Um, she asked me to knit her a pair of socks from a long time and I'm just not getting around to it. So I'm excited for this. Um, but that's it for maker plan, maker plans. So the last little bit that we'll get into is stash positions slash, um, stash positions slash plant mama life and whatnot. We're going to lump it all together because the sun is setting and the, it's going to get grainy real fast. So stash positions, I showed you that already. Um, this stash position I'm really excited about. Um, one of my local thrift stores is like the thrift store I go to when I'm hoping to find something crafty. I don't know what it is about this one, but that's where all the crafty things be. <laughs> so this one particular day I went and like struck gold with crafting books. And normally whenever I find crafting books, specifically crochet books, um, they are like in the thrift store, they're like vintage ones, which I love. I love my vintage crochet and knitting books, but it's very um, infrequent that I find modern books. That baby Godzilla is going at it. Sounding all big. Let me make sure that's not a bigger thing. Hello? Stay over there, mind your business. Anyway. I got this book and this is this makes me really excited because these are books that I've looked at and like considered buying but um, you know didn't really want to pay $25 at the time um, but my thrift store had it for a dollar fifty yes please so I got that one um, that's I also got this one and I like this because it's crochet and has a lot of um, cables in it. So I don't often do crochet cables, but I would love to um, do more of them. Oh, that's a really cute uh, cardigan. Wait a minute. Can you guys stop? You, I'm looking at you. Mind your business, be good. Gosh. Let me see if I can show you that. Where did it go? wasn't back this far there it is this is adorable do I need to make this do I need to make this maybe but that and then I got this one but then when I looked through it um, I decided that these patterns are not my style but they are Sarah's style who is the other um, host of the knit and crochet group at work. So I'm going to take this to her. I'm gonna actually put it in my bag so that I don't forget it um, this week. So those were the modern ones that I got. 
And then I also got these vintagey ones. This one I got for this pattern because summer and this one. So this is this one is really like a crochet version or very similar to a crochet version of that um, summer secret crop top that I that I made that I knit. But like the crochet version, like same kind of um, shaping. This one I got because I liked the drapiness, but I don't know if I'll actually make anything from this book. Not sure. The jury is out. But they're really cool though. Then I got this one. I love this. I like. I just. She looks so excited. Um. Let me see. What did I like in here? Like, some of these are just so cute. Like, look at that skirt. Would I wear them out? I mean, would I make a huge granny square skirt? No. Would I think about it? Yes. I would make a granny square jacket like that, though. I would do that. Um, let me see. Oh, there also are some granny square blankets in here that like the the layouts I just haven't like I I didn't think of like whenever I think of a granny square blanket it's just square 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 you know like little bricks but this one puts the squares in sets of three and then crochets around them and then joins the rectangles together I thought that was really cool like a really cool look um let me see if there's anything else in this one oh, it's all patterns in the back um But I just, I love, the, oh, and look at this. This one is another blanket where you're starting with the squares, but they're joined um, corner to corner, like um, on a diagonal. And then they make zigzags, like zigzag granny through the, the middle, which is a great idea. I'm making that, definitely gonna do that. Might do something like this. This looks like a lot of pieces though, but that that might happen with that um, yellow cotton yarn that I showed you guys last episode. But yes. And then the last two books are just Afghan books. I love finding books like this because um, the squares or motifs that they put in these, like on these blankets are always so interesting and I like to think like, oh, how can I convert that to maybe something that's wearable or like a tote bag or, you know, something smaller. Yeah. Um, yeah, but that's it on here. Those are my books. <laughs> Go away. Let's see see um I also purchased some buttons from crochet Luna um if you have not heard of Claudia of crochet Luna click her link um she makes all kinds of crafty buttons so um there are a lot of of course crochet themes and they're also knitting themes so i bought these two buttons one says never not knitting and the other says never not crocheting because very much the truth and um because i have no stitch markers at all i bought a mystery set of stitch markers from her which i think is hilarious because the whole reason that she was selling mystery sets was because she had too many stitch markers and i already know that i have too many stitch markers but i could not resist getting stitch markers like from my friend Claudia and just being like, oh, Claudia, use these. Mm. So th there's that. Um, the last thing that I wanted to show you guys is part of a happy mail, a happy mailbox that I got from my friend Tina. Um, she sent me a box of goodies. Of course there was yarn in it. Um, There's actually some yarn from Birch Hollow Fibers who is my favorite dyer. Like, I love the way Robin dyes her colors. I don't, I don't know what it is about the colors that she dyes, but they always just make me smile. But anyway, 
Tina sent me a box of goodies and in that box was this um, piece of art. I don't know who the artist is. So Tina, if you see this, let me know. Um, I'm taking it out the plastic because y'all have to see this without the glare. It's so cute. I have had it sitting up on my bookshelf um, just as an art print. Look at that. She's like a little magical black girl. I love it. Um, but I love little pieces of art like this. They just, they bring me so much joy. Um, another thing that I love doing is um, buying like greeting cards. Um, because oftentimes, if you didn't know, a lot of times um, greeting cards tend to be around a five by seven size. So you can get a greeting card from like an artist, like if you can't, um, you know, splash out for a print or something like that, you could potentially get a greeting card or a postcard. And those tend to be five by seven or four by six size, which is frameable. So there you go, pro tip. Um, I have so many little art things that I just want to like frame and in my future like craft room, I'm going to have like a gallery wall just full of artists that make me happy. It's a dream. It's a dream, it's coming. But that is everything. The sun is almost quit her day job. Um, I don't know what she's so tired for. She got a vacation today. We should have got four more extra minutes. <laughs> but um, uh, speaking of the son getting a four minute vacation today, um, I did come outside to look at the eclipse. Um, the most fun thing that I did with viewing the eclipse was um, playing with like pinhole projection. Um, Everywhere that you see like online is like, oh, you know, you have to make this whole contraption to view the eclipse. Like you have to take a box and you got to put the paper inside of it and then cover it like this and then poke a hole like this. You don't even have to do all of that. You could just take a piece of paper, like preferably like cardstock so it's not flimsy and just poke holes in it and just hold it up so that the sun casts a shadow and those holes will show you the shape of the eclipse like it was so simple i because i you know can't just do anything regular i poked holes in the shape of a heart and so i have this image with like heart eclipse and it just made me so excited i loved it um i also saw um a thing online it was like on a reel and it was saying like if you have anything that reflects light like a disco ball the reflected light from the sun during an eclipse will be the shape of the eclipse as well. So I do have a disco ball hanging by my desk. And so um, when it got to the point of the day where the sun was shining through the window, it was still partially eclipsed. Um, the disco ball was like shining little tiny eclipse sunspots on the wall and ooh, it was so delightful. I, I just loved that so much. Um, but I was able to figure out how to get my camera to take a picture of the eclipse through my eclipse glasses. I'm very excited about that. Um, so I will put up a picture here. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a fun day. It was a fun, exciting day. Um, just to be able to witness that. So I'm glad that I was able to get eclipse glasses because I totally forgot about it. I was supposed to get some yesterday and failed and so today i was trying to figure out like what i was going to do and i luckily um, my local library still had some so i could get a pair um and then i was just like oh i'll put these in storage for the next time like put them in one of my space books for the next time we have an eclipse but the next time that a total eclipse is supposed to come across the u.s is in like 20 years so yeah but yeah um, there will be plenty other spacey things for me to experience and see between now and then. Um, but definitely being able to witness the eclipse today was my bright spot. Um, 
I hope that you had a good day, possibly got to, to see the eclipse in your area. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go because as you can see, it is getting dark. That is our security light that keeps coming on every time I move. So um, that being said, thank you all for being a part of my universe. No, <laughs> thank you all for being here today. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Uh, leave a comment of something good that happened to you so that we can celebrate together in the comment section. Um, and now, thank you for being a part of my universe. <laughs> Bye, friends. I'm going to do all that moving you're not going to turn on now. Thank you. Bye, friends.